everybody, I'm Bill Sanders, and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection. Uh, today, what I want to do is talk about the expense or the cost of too much conformity. Uh, let me explain what I mean by that. Uh, not long ago, I was talking to this guy, and he wanted to buy a, a certain uh, watch. I think, in fact, I'm on positive it was a Rolex. I don't remember which one it was. And he said he'd like to get it. He had saved up his money for it. But the, uh, the AD, the authorized dealer, wanted a 25% premium for the watch. Well, I think, wait, <laughs> premium, premium. In other words, that's basically a 25% gouging. Uh, the term premium means the very best. Uh, it doesn't mean you can gouge somebody for 25%. But why was he able to do that? Well, it's a popular watch. The particular model that he wanted was very popular. And so the when a lot of people want something, it's <laughs> authorized dealers and everybody else will charge you more. So it it it's one of those things that's important to factor in when you're collecting watches. If you want to be a conformist, it's going to cost you more. Okay, now I, I, I'm not saying I'm not a conformist in, in a lot of ways. The first watch I I bought as when I started really getting serious about collection was a Patek Philippe Calatrava, and you can't get it any more conformist than a Patek Philippe Calatrava. Okay. Uh, on the other hand, though, as I started collecting watches, I'd see a watch I like, and I'd learn about it, I'd find out about it. Uh, sometimes they were popular, sometimes not. Uh, one that uh, was not very popular ever uh, was the men's version of the uh, Vesseron Constantin 1972. And I got it for a really good deal. Well, now, I think for some reason, they've gained in popularity, and so the price has gone up, <laughs> right? But at the time, I just liked it. Uh, I also found out some neat things about it. It had a, a golden section in it, and some other kind of neat things like that. Okay, uh, again, it was not a popular watch, and so it's the whole notion of conformity and watch collection is is one that is, uh, to me, not a healthy way to collect watches. I think the healthy way to collect watches are two things. First of all, find out what you want, uh, as you want, not what everybody else thinks you should want. And it doesn't matter what kind it is. It really doesn't. If, if you like a certain kind of watch uh, that nobody else wants, so what? Collect them. There was this one collection I saw of a watch that I, I have no interest in, and it was this guy who was collecting these uh, old uh, Tag Hoyers. Neat collection. A guy loved them. <laughs> okay, fine. Uh, that's, an, that's a good collection, in my opinion. All right. Uh, on the other hand, if you're, if you're paying premiums, because you're going to be the first guy on the block with X watch that everybody else wants, I, I don't know about that. Now, conformity and non-conformity. I, I suppose it's not conformity versus non-conformity that I'm talking about. So much as it is, is don't worry about it. Don't worry about either one. Uh, I know that uh, people accuse hipsters of, of <laughs> conforming to non-conformity. Uh, maybe they do. I don't care. Uh, what I'm trying to talk about is that if you, if you get stuck with conformity, you lose out on a lot of things. Hey, let me give you an example. Um, this particular watch is my Harry Winston Premier by Retrograde. Now, as, as a watch, uh, when I first sort of floated the notion of, well, what about Harry Winston? Oh, that's a, that's a fashion watch uh, or a designer watch, one of the two. They were wrong. It, it, it yeah, it, in the sense that Harry Winston is a jeweler and was known as a jeweler of the stars and decided he wanted to, uh, the, the company, they said, well, they want to make watches. Actually, they had done it a lot longer than I had thought. 
But the point was, was that, well, they don't have an in-house movement. Okay, now that, that can be important a lot of times, a lot of times. I, I said so myself, have an in-house movement. No, they don't have an in-house movement, but they have something as good, if not better, in certain respects. Now, and, and something that I certainly couldn't afford <laughs> otherwise. Uh, in this, you have a Gerard Perigo, and then you have a an Agenhor by retrograde module. Okay, now Agenhor is, is this movement company that makes world class movements. Uh, uh, Jean Marc uh, Viderec is the founder and sort of the the guy behind uh, Agenhor. Now, what he he helped design this watch, right, from the ground up. Now, you know, this is the guy that's making hundred thousand dollar plus movements uh, for uh, Grand Prix winners and so forth. But he decided, for whatever reason, this would be a good idea. And I said, Gerard Perigo, they're they're used by a lot of luxury companies. So instead of being, you know, either having a quartz in it, which I'm not interested in at all. Or some kind of throwing in some, uh, you know, a Salita or an ETA, they, Harry Winston decided to use the, the very best. And I'm glad they did. Uh, so it's sort of an interesting kind of thing. Uh, do many people like them? No, they don't. And so what happened was I got it for a great price. And this is because the person selling it, it was a dealer, it was an authorized uh, Harry Winston dealer, as a matter of fact. Um, he wasn't having much luck selling it either, so I came along and said, "Hey, you know." But the the difference was the difference was was that first of all, I wasn't looking for things to impress uh, friends and so forth, but rather I was looking for a piece that I wanted. And 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 I think that that's so. If if you're going to be too much of a conformist, it's going to cost you more money. All right, that's all there is to it. Not because the watch is better, but because more people want the same thing. Now, because the more people want the same thing doesn't mean it's any better. It just means more people know about it. Uh, the advertisements are better. I have uh, one of the things that's uh, sort of funny. Uh, this is my uh, Patek Philippe, and I love my Patek Philippe. Now, the advertisement says you never own, you never really own a Patek Philippe. I got news for them. I own this. If I want to sell it, I can go ahead and sell it. I, it, some people who, if you live by uh, the advertising campaign, <laughs> you're 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 hopeless. Uh, hello, Paddock Philippe. Uh, if I want to, I can sell it, and and I can buy another Paddock Philippe. I can, uh, you know, I can give it to my dog. I can do anything I want to with it. <laughs> if I had a dog, I can give it to the neighbor's goats. Anyhow, um, well, that's about it for the sort of the sense of. It's not so much nonconformity as it is. Don't worry about conformity. Don't worry about popularity. Okay, it might help you in terms of resale, and I can give you the Patek Philippe and um, Rolex if you want to have high resale. If you want to have something different, you want to have something unique. Find out about watches. Find out everything you can. Uh, and you'll end up with some really neat pieces like the Vasseron Constantin 1972, uh, and for at a much better price. This is this is the best part about it. Or a uh, Harry Winston. Or I had this other one I got was a Zenus with a um, uh, the guy had taken out uh, some links in the in the in the uh, in the band. And uh, no one wanted to buy it because it was too small. Heck, I bought it, and I got a heck of a good buy on it. And he went out and bought a new band. <laughs> so I mean, it's like it's not rocket science. <laughs> uh, so anyhow, okay. Well, now listen. Um, I got an unboxing, and uh, this unboxings are always a lot of fun. So let's go see what gets unboxed. Okay. Um, well, I got a. New watch here, and let's take a look at it. We'll have an unboxing. Um, not sure how to open this box. We'll see, they're all different. Uh, let's see what we got in. Okay. Uh, let's pull 
figure this out. And we got some more stuff down here. Okay. Let's see what's in here. And we'll bring this out. This. And let's open her up. Whoops, upside down. Okay, let's see what we got here. And. Uh, there we have it, a Beauvais 1930, 1930 Fourier. Well, let's get it out of there and see what we got. Okay, uh, here it is on the wrist. I took my other watch off. Uh, this little thing is sticking out a little, so I'll just bring it up here. And... There we have it, and give it a, some lens cleaner from my glasses, and uh, there it is. Now this is a good size watch. I have a, what I like to think of as a regular sized wrist, and um, this is is very very comfortable <laughs> I, I gotta tell you uh the band is nice and long for uh, people with a bigger size wrist and uh it does pop out a little here but you can just pull this up and there it is now to really appreciate this as a as a watch it <laughs> let's face it it's a it's a fairly a uh, fancy formal watch. I suppose you might be able to uh, to wear it at a um, oh at work or something like that. <laughs> Depends on where you work. Okay, uh, now this has got a seven day of uh, a seven day uh, reserve on it, and so once I get it wound up, it'll go for seven days. Now right now it's totally unwound, so. I'm going to wind it up uh, with the the crowners up here, and on top of the crown is a 0 .30 carat uh, sapphire. So let me get this off. Okay. And all right, so now to wind it, I like to put on my gloves uh, when I wind my watches. Okay, so to wind it, I'm going to pull this down. Let's see. And it just winds right away. And it's starting to tick already. Now, if it takes seven days to wind it, <laughs> that'll be a problem. Uh, but it has a seven-day reserve. Right here is a reserve indicator on it. So let's watch that guy. Okay, uh, it's all wound up. Now let me set the time. Oddly enough, it's... Uh, gee whiz. It's 11.15, so this thing's almost where the time is. So let me set it to right to 11.15. And bingo. Uh, we're good to go. Uh, that's all there was to it. Now, it, it is a little awkward uh, winding it, uh, but not terribly so. And uh, I only have to do it every seven days. So <laughs> anyway, okay, so uh, there's my bouvet. Okay, I got my uh, new Beauvais on. It's uh, my Beauvais uh, 1930 with the 
a crown and a bow, or is it bow and crown at the top, and a bar lug at the bottom. Very different one. Then here it has the uh, little Beauvais um, uh, buckle on it, too. Okay, well, uh, like I said, uh, enjoy your watches. Don't worry about what everybody else is saying. If 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 if, if all you want to do is flip watches, then yeah, you know, we'll see about buying what everybody else wants. But I think you're going to miss out on some of the most fun watches that are out there. And I think this is one of them. It's very different from anything I have. And so what if people go, oh, well, you know, that's weird. <laughs> so what? I like it. All right. This is uh, Bill Sanders for Watch Art Sci. The Art and Science of Watch Collection. Hey, uh, not many days left uh, in the uh, Grand Prix Picks contest. So if you want to, if you want to have a shot at winning uh, one of two free watches, why don't you go ahead and enter? See you next Friday.